This video explains how to remove values that are less or greater than the 5th and 95th percentile in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In the first example of this tutorial, I will show you how to remove values that are less or greater than the 5th or the 95th percentile from a vector object. And for this, we first need to create an example vector, as you can see in the second line of code. So after running this line of code, a new data object called x is appearing at the top right. And we can print this data object to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 3. And then you can see that we have created a vector object containing different numbers. And you can also see that some of these numbers are relatively large or relatively small. Now in the next step, we need to calculate the 5th and the 95th percentiles of this vector object. And we can do that by using the quantile function, as you can see in line 5 of the code. And in this case, I'm also storing the output of the quantile function in a new data object that I'm calling x quantiles. So after running line 5 of the code, this new data object is appearing at the top right. And after running line 6 of the code, you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that our fifth percentile is equal to minus 641.20 and the 95th percentile is equal to 67.45. Now, if we want to create a subset of our vector object that contains only the values between the fifth and the 95th, percentiles. We can use logical conditions as you can see in lines 8 and 9 of the code. So in these lines of code I'm specifying the name of our data object and then I'm specifying that I want to keep only those values that are greater than the fifth percentile and less than the 95th percentile. And I'm storing the output of this in a new data object that I'm calling x subset. So after running lines 8 and 9 of the code, this new data object is appearing at the top right. And after running line 10, the output is returned at the bottom in the RStudio console. And as you can see, our resulting vector object contains only the values that are within this percentile range and the values 100 and minus 987 have been removed. So in this first example, I have explained how to remove values based on percentiles in a vector object. However, we can also remove rows of a data frame based on this method. And this is what I want to show you in the second example, starting in line 12 of the code. So in lines 12 and 13, I'm first creating an example data frame, which is called data. And if we print this data frame to the bottom in the RStudio console, you can see that our data frame contains two columns. The first column contains numbers and the second column contains letters. Now let's assume that we want to remove certain rows from this data frame based on the 5th and 95th percentile. Then, as in the previous example, we need to apply the quantile function to get the percentiles that we want to use as benchmarks. So in this case, we want to use the column x1 to check for the percentiles. And as in the previous example, I'm storing the output of the quantile function in a new data object. So after running line 16 of the code, a new data object called data x1 quantiles is appearing at the top right. And after running line 17, you can see that the fifth quantile of our column x1 is minus 582.5 and the 95th percentile is 750.25. Now, if we want to drop certain rows from our data frame based on these percentiles, we can once again use logical conditions. As you can see in lines 19 and 20 of the code, and as in the first example, I'm storing the output of this in a new data object that I'm calling data subset. So after running lines 19 and 20, this new data frame object is appearing at the top right. And when you run line 21 of the code, you can see at the bottom in the console that we have removed the first and the last rows from our data frame and only the values within this percentile range have been kept. 
That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.